Welcome back to Cursed Mining and today it's already time for the April farm update. This is the 13th episode in a monthly series in which we discuss all the machines mining for me and what has changed or is upcoming for the channel. We'll start with the GPU rigs today. Here a lot of stuff has changed around and will continue to do so. We finally finished up the Monero rig which started as used mining rig. It got its new home and I'm still more than happy with the efficiency. Only around 450 watts for 6 cards and around 4.4 kilohash on Kryptonite v10 for now it's still heating my office but it's already getting hotter in austria so it will move downstairs soon monero mining has been good but as you know i've already had the rigs on it even before the fork i just like the project and have loads of respect for the devs who spend so much time on always changing and trying to keep it fair for the people who made their network strong GPU and CPU miners. On the mixed rig we just repaired the Asus RX470 which had to go out of order for some time. But still you'll see that it's now only running with 5 cards again. So another card had to go. The monster you see here was an R9 280X for which we built a custom cooler some time ago. A beast of a card and also a beast of a cooler. But I had some reasons for taking it out of order. Firstly it's the most power hungry card I have here. So it was time to retire it. Secondly, I finally wanted to get fully away from Windows with my GPU mining rigs. So also this rig is now running on HiveOS. Without customizing it, HiveOS does not like R9 cars, so it had to go. I will do a dedicated video for this card because this workhorse alone has financed other cards, which you see on the channel. So it will get a video discussing everything it has mined over its mining career to so send it off. I have some friends running even older dinosaurs in their gaming rigs, so I'll build the original cooler back and retire it with a friend where I know it will spend a good rest of its life. Besides that, the rig generally got a complete rebuild again, which is a topic for another video. While doing so, I also prepared the part for the 6 GPU, which will move there soon, the Vega 56, which now sits in the Ryzen system. The last of my 3 GPU rigs is the Octaminer and it finally got some well deserved cleaning. I shot some footage for Brandon Coin for a little collaboration and that gave me the possibility to finally clean it out. That was more than necessary. Here you still see a mix of Nvidia 10 series cards mining Ion on Ion Pool Tech. Also now in a rather low power configuration, only around 500 watts. We are talking 1 1050 Ti, 3 different 1060 6 GB and a 1070 Ti. I'm always divided in opinion how I will continue to run it. Maybe downsize for the summer or just keep them jugging along. Because of the Delta fans of the Octominer case, no card is above 60C. Definitely no living room rig, that is for sure. But extremely reliable from day one when I started to feature Octominer on the channel. So let's discuss ASICs. I'm still positive on the L3 Plus, even though it's the most power hungry machine here. It's still running Bliss firmware and the config we set there, so a bit above 1000 watts for 630 megahash per second. More people seem to have gotten their L3 Plus back on the network because daily earnings are down a bit compared to previous weeks and months. Together with my two future bit moonlanders, we are at 0.032 LTC per day. As I told you in the last update, the L3 Plus will definitely stay here up until the upcoming Litecoin halving. After that, also not 100% sure yet. Turning to the Baikal Giant Plus, I really have to tell you that for me it has become a legendary miner. Yet again, it's producing good coin and profit. Mind that this miner officially came out in August 2017, it's almost 2 years old. Not many ASICs can stay profitable this long. It's even more profitable than newer machines by the same company for the simple fact that they decided to leave out the X13 algorithm. It's good for miners like us who kept onto their machines. That hash rate goes into a project I really like, Deep Onion, as well as some of it seems to go to Bitcoin Diamond. Here I don't know much about it since I have not occupied myself with projects using Bitcoin's name. If you have opinions or want to tell me something about that project, please write in the comments. But generally I'm really glad to have kept onto it. I'm also staking Deep Onion, because it's a hybrid project. Turning to the last machine, the Z9 Mini is giving me a bit of a headache. Not because of the machine itself, it runs great, overclocked to max and only using around 400 watts. But as you might know, Bitmain just announced the Z11 and batch 1 is already sold out. Of course, Inner Silicon did not wait long to announce an Equihash beast 
surprised as well. They already flooded the market before and now they do it again. Yay. So I'm pretty unsure how the Equihash landscape will look in the future. We'll not discuss CPU mining again today, besides some of my favorite Kryptonite light algos being riddled by FPGA and ASICs, I want to do a dedicated video to that soon. And lastly, another good bear market deal inspired me to do a video I've wanted to do for some time. We'll focus on PSUs and mining. That is upcoming next week. I'll be playing a concert on the weekend and really looking forward to get out again. So I have to get ahead in terms of videos anyway. That's already it for this week. Thanks to each and every one of you for tuning in. All the best to you. Happy mining and bye. Thank <laughs> you.